All right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser, Baker's Leather Supply, and today we're going to build the Pony Express satchel. Okay, now this bag, um, this one, this particular one, made out of uh, bison, American bison leather. I love the rusticness of this bag. Um, to be very honest, I, I like man bags. However, there's kind of a stipulus behind them or whatever, like there's a you know, people call it a man purse and stuff like that, and so, you, I don't know. Anyway, I, I really like the convenience of having a bag that I can carry around. I'm not always liking carrying my big old backpack around and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, this one, to me, kind of fits that bill. Um, it is s s large enough for a small, like, laptop, um, stuff like that. Um, the biggest uh, iPad that you can find fits in it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a good size. Uh, it can be. It has a shoulder strap to it back here. Um, talk about some features here. I guess it, uh, these little two little clips hold it closed. Do, do, do. There we go. So inside, it's got a pocket uh, or a sleeve. I guess you could say for a, for an electronic device or something. It's got another pocket right here in the front, maybe for a cell phone or whatever. You can see the outline of where it's sewn right there. Um, anyway, and then these right here make it expandable. Um, you can pull those uh, pull those straps off and then just hook them on one hook instead of two, and it, it makes it to where it opens up quite a bit more uh, to stuff more junk in it. So, um, again, I, I constantly struggle with some sort of a bag that a dude could carry without, you know, being made fun of. <laughs> it's a satchel. Indiana Jones carried one of these, if you recognize that movie. But, uh, anyway, um, this is a really cool bag, and I'm super excited about it, and um, today I'm going to actually make it out of a different leather just to see how it goes too, um, but I love the ruggedness of this, this bison that I made this one out of. Um, this is this month's project box, and we got in a bunch of this bison, and I just knew that it was time to, to pull this pattern out of mothballs. I've, I've got lots of patterns and stuff I've created that it's just not time yet. And when we got in this big old pallet of this bison leather, I was like, it is, it is time for the Pony Express satchel. Um, yeah, and I'm super excited that we got it out here. And um, we had only enough bison to make 150 of the, um, 150 of them on the project box out of the bison itself. And then the rest of them, uh, the option was the Legacy Ranch Collection leather, which is what I'm going to make mine out of today. Um, but anyway, the uh, the bison leather went really quick, so I think a lot of people agreed on the, the rusticness and everything of this and how it looks. So, yeah, without further ado, we'll get to it. All right, so first we're going to talk about the template, and then we're going to talk about the kit that went out in the project box, okay? So when you receive a template, it'll be kind of like this. We've taped it up. It's got a lot of pieces, okay? Um... Unfortunately, this is not a cheap template to buy because, again, there's a lot of pieces to it. But we wanted to make it out of the acrylic and not the flexible stuff. We definitely didn't want to turn it into a paper pattern that nobody likes. This one was worth having an acrylic template. So, um, yeah. So we're going to pull all these pieces apart and we'll talk about each one of them individually. Um, the entire bag, um, minus the two straps that you saw me uh, that make the, the bag expandable, and then the strap that you're going to use for uh, like a shoulder strap, everything else can be made out of like a, anywhere from five to seven ounce, uh, some sort of bag leather, something kind of floppy and, and stuff. This is not a rigid made bag at all. Okay, so we're going to start, we'll just start with the biggest piece and work our way to the smallest. This funky looking thing is not just a piece to cut out um, your your main body pieces of your bag, but it's also um, a jig to help you place all your little squares and pockets and stuff in the in the right position where they need to be. So anyway, um, with this piece, you're gonna cut three out. One of them's gonna be your front piece of your bag, one of them's gonna be that middle pocket, and one of them's gonna be the back of the bag. And you don't wanna cut these holes out of it, you just wanna cut out the outline of the piece. Okay, again, the holes act as a, as a jig when you go to putting the other pieces together. Okay, so the next biggest piece we have is this one right here. This is the bag flap. All right, and uh, once again, it's got some holes in it that will act as a jig. You do not cut those holes out. All right, 
Next biggest piece we have, this is one of those puzzle pieces. Okay, insert tab A into slot B. Put a piece of masking tape across there if you like and that'll hold it really steady actually. Um, but this makes up the bottom part of the gusset right here. You cut one of those out. And then we've got this piece right here is the side gussets. We're gonna cut two of these. Then this piece right here is the pocket. Um, I'll show you there's two different places we could position this pocket. We'll talk about that here in a little bit, but cut out one of those. This right here, it says flap hinge on it. This is what goes between the back and the flap to act as the hinge, I guess you could say. Um, I could have just made those two one big long solid piece, but then you've got to have one nice big piece of clean leather to make it out of. If you make it out of two smaller pieces and put a little piece in between them like this, then you're kind of conserving leather. So, good stuff. All right. Um, this right here is the, um, the top support for the, uh, the front, front of the bag. This is the shoulder strap pad. This bad boy right here, you'll need six of. And you're going to get real familiar with stitching while you make this bag. Because, again, there's six of these. They go all over the dang thing. And uh, anyway, but they hold on all of our fancy little buckles and, and stuff like that. Okay? And then this one right here is that little uh, strap that you saw me pull off to, uh, to make the bag expand. Okay, this needs to be made out of the same stuff that your shoulder strap is made out of. Generally looking at like a eight to nine ounce like harness or veg or something like that. Somewhere in there. Um, can be a, an ounce or two lighter, can be an ounce or two heavier, but somewhere in there. Okay, so there's the template. Now, if you got the project box, let's talk about the kit that you got. Or if you buy the kit, because this is going to be a kit as well as we're about to start making many of our most popular projects into actual kits. Okay, so what all did we get in the kit? We'll start once again with our largest pieces. Okay, so you got three pieces here that are all the same size. That was that biggest piece of the template there. All right, one of them's gonna end up being the back of the bag, one of them's gonna be the middle pocket, and one of them's gonna be the front of the bag, okay? Now, I personally, I took some of the gnarliest ones that had brands and stuff like that, and that's what I'm making my bag kit out of. Some people really like getting leather that's like that, that's unique, there'll never be another one like it. Um, some people love that, but then other people see it and they're like, oh, th that's flawed leather, I don't wanna use that, and so, Honestly, a lot of that, I mean, we sent out tons of them with brands and stuff, and I even placed the clicker dies where the brand would be in a very prominent position. But um, anyway, but I did save one of the brands for, for me to make the shop display bag out of, because a lot of people do like it, and it, and it really does make a unique project, okay? So I got three of those, and um, we'll talk about as we use these pieces where they need to be skived, all right? Um, actually, we'll talk about it now. This is the one I'm going to use for my back piece, and it has zero skiving on it whatsoever. No skives. Okay? My favorite piece. No skives. This one is going to be the front panel of the bag, and I skived it on three sides. Okay? So I skived it down both sides and across the bottom. All right? Now, if you're making this out of a, a thin, super flexible leather, you don't need to worry about skiving it at all. Again, this is kind of a rugged bag. But um, this leather is a little bit more heavy duty. It's a little bit thicker. And uh, so I did skive it down some. I did all the kits. So then this is going to be the middle pocket. Okay. And the only skive I did on it was right across the top. And we're going to do a folded edge on it when we go to fix all this piece. Okay. All right. Other than that, I have, here's the piece, the, the bottom gusset that would have been the two puzzle pieces put together. Okay, and I skived down one edge of it. Just one long edge, that's it. And then here's the side gussets, and I did the exact same, whoop, that's it. There's the side gussets, and once again, I did the same thing, and I skived one edge of each of those. That skives about five-eighths of an inch wide or so, and roughly half the thickness of the leather. Okay, but again, if your leather's super flexible and everything, you don't need to worry about skiving it, okay? All right, get that out of the way there. Um, that is the interior pocket right there, that little one. 
All right, no scabbing needed on it. And then I don't know if I talked about this or not, but there's my, my bag flap. Once again, I put a brand on it. Um, I put it right in the middle. That's kind of a cool brand. Uh, it's like a R and a D or something. I don't know. Maybe there's a K involved. I don't know. Cool bag, cool brand. All right, those are the major pieces. Now let's talk about this whole bag of bits here, okay? Because once again, this thing has a lot of pieces. All right, so I'm gonna dump this out. This piece right here is the same material I'm gonna use for my shoulder strap, except I thinned it down to where it's about four to five ounces or so. And what this is, is this is what's gonna hold all of my D-rings and things like that to the bag, okay? There's that pocket uh, flap hinge that we talked about earlier. No scabbing on it. Um, this right here will be folded in half and turned into the handle. Okay, there's not a piece in the template for this. This is uh, one inch wide and looks to be about 13 and a half inches long. However, we're probably gonna trim this down to shorter. This bag does not need a large handle, um, but I had to put something in the kit so that people could make their handle out of it, okay? There is the shoulder um, shoulder strap uh, support, I guess you could say, the padding so that it doesn't just wear down on your shoulder too bad. There's that piece that goes right along the top of the front panel of the bag, and it is, uh, it's gonna have four of the uh, Sam Brown buttons in it. Okay, once again, there's that little square it's got a hole and a oblong in it, okay? And there's six of these. And that is a one inch oblong and then a little like eighth inch um, hole. And that's to, uh, once again, hold, of our, hold all of our little uh, D-rings and straps and things like that onto it. So there's six of those. This piece is has been thinned down a little bit. Again, if you're if you're using a leather that's already kind of thin and easy to fold over, you don't need to thin it down. But for the Legacy Ranch, I did need to thin it down some. But this is gonna be the welt that goes around the very front panel there. Um, when you make up your bottom gusset and your two side gussets, it should be roughly this length. And uh, so that should all match up. And we'll use that to help us measure it later. Then here's our two pieces that we're gonna have on the front of the bag for the Sam Brown buttons to make it expandable. A lot of pieces, guys. A lot of pieces. <laughs> All right. Now, here's our whole other bag of bits. Okay, this is this is all the hardware it takes to make this bag. Okay, so I got two snap hooks here. Um, I'm gonna use these to hold the shoulder strap onto the back of the bag. I've got four D rings. Two of them go on the front of the bag. Two of them go on the back of the bag. The two on the front are for part of the closure. The two on the back are part of the uh, to hold the shoulder strap on now the bag i'm going to make today i'm actually using a little bit different hardware okay and we'll, i'll talk about that in just a second so i'm gonna set these aside to remind me to talk about that now these two snaps are what hold the bag closed they go through those two d-rings in the front but once again i'm going to use something kind of different today and so i'm going to set these right here uh, this is a one inch cart buckle. I'm only using it for the shoulder strap to make the shoulder strap adjustable. If you don't need to make your shoulder strap adjustable, you don't need the sucker. And then here I have a little packet with four Sam Brown buttons. Okay, and those are once again what that little strap on the front will uh, attach to to make the bag expandable. And then I have me a whole little baggie of brass rivets and burrs. I think there's a dozen in here. I think that's what I counted. It was either 12 or 15 it takes to make this bag. The only other thing in there was these two straps right here. There's two straps, one short, one long. The short one will have the buckle on it. The long one will go around, um, around the rest of the uh, shoulder strap. But those two straps together make up our shoulder strap. All right? That's a lot, huh? That's a lot to talk about. That's a lot to pack. Oh my gosh, we've been packing project boxes for two weeks. I just finished this morning. I'm so excited to finally be done with them. I feel like I can breathe a little bit. Um, we had uh, 260, I believe, this month is how many we had to pack. And again, all those pieces, 260 times. <laughs> all right, now, 
I wanted to include these in the project box because I'd seen them online somewhere, but then for the longest time I couldn't find them. And um, yeah, I was one of those, I saw them one day, thought, oh, those are cool. And then when I needed them, I couldn't figure out where I found them. And the cool news is they were with Buckle Guy, who we now carry Buckle Guy hardware. And so, dang it. <laughs> um, the good news is they are with Buckle Guy, and we're carrying them now here at Maker's Leather Supply. The bad news is these bad boys are $11 and some change a piece. But man, they're cool. So what it is, it almost looks like a clothespin. See how it opens and closes? I'm going to use this for my bag closure on the bag I'm making today. Okay? Um, and instead of D-rings with it, I'm going to use these other kinds of little strap hangers that we have. Because they really seem to go together really well. Um, so that's the only difference I'm going to make on my bag today, as opposed to the one that um, you were shipped or that you can make with uh, the kit. Um, again, these are really cool. I love them, and I can't wait to make this bag with them, but they are $11 and some change a piece. So it would have added a significant amount of cost to the project box to put these on there. Plus, once again, I, I didn't know where to find them at the time, but now I got them because, yeah, had to have it. I'm super excited. So, once again, without further ado, we're going to kind of clean this off. I'm going to get it organized where I can reach and grab stuff as I need it. And we're going to start placing those little squares all over the bags, uh, the bag pieces, so that we know where to, where to, where to put them. We're going to use that, uh, that template as a jig to do that. So, be right back. All right, so we're going to start out by placing these six little squares that we talked about. And then also our um, our pocket, okay? So again, your template can be used as a jig, all right? So there is my front flap template piece. There is my front flap um, leather right there. So all you do is you take and you put your uh, your template on your leather, and then that square is going to fit beautifully right inside there. And you use some double-sided tape to stick it down, and there you go. You're already placed. Now, now that I've said that, um, I have to make a very slight change in mine because, once again, I'm using a different clasp on the, begin the, the front of the bag, and mine just needs to move up a tiny bit because this clasp is longer than the, uh, the snap hooks that, were, that normally would go here. Okay? So, I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to show you how we... Uh, we tape this on here, and um, yeah. So when you do the tape on these little pieces, you're going to want to use four small pieces of tape around the outside edges of that piece. Okay, there will be a strap that gets put down behind that piece. Um, so you don't want to tape through the center of it. You just want to do around the edges. So this is my, my quarter inch double sided tape. Makes it easy. You can glue this if you want, but uh, this tape sure is quick and easy for what we're doing here. So I like to use it. Okay. And again, I'm gonna pull my um, template up just a little bit for mine. And then when I place these on the flap portion, I want that slot facing the bottom of the flap down here. Okay, so it'll go just like that. So we'll line everything up, make sure everything's good and square in there and looks good. I'll take the back off my uh, tape here. And just set it right there inside that template. Now when I remove the template, um, that piece will stay right where it needs to be and uh, it's going to be perfect. Okay, but I need to do that twice on this piece. So, one more again. So, four more small pieces of tape. Just like that. Make sure my template didn't move on me. And uh, oh, we're going to have to put, take the 
backings off those pieces. And then once again, when I put it on this flap, I want the um, the slot facing the, the, the bottom of the flap. There we go. Set it in there. And that little jig makes this a beautiful project. So there it is right there. Now in a little bit, we'll go over to the sewing machine and we'll sew those two on. But we might as well stick all six of them while we're, while we're at it. There's no reason to keep walking back and forth all day. Okay? Now, I'll just describe that same process for the other pieces, and then, um, then we'll get to it. Now, one of these pieces was skived on the back side in three places, or around three sides, okay? That's the front of my bag. And when I go to put them on the front of the bag, right now the bottom of it's facing the camera, I want to put my template on there the exact same way. Okay, and again, this is the bottom of the bag down here, facing the camera, all right? That's where my two squares are gonna go on this piece, all right? And they, the little, um, the slot is gonna face up, all right? So that when the, when, the, when the flap is over it, those little slots would be facing towards each other, okay? Um, so anyway, I'm gonna put two of them on this piece right here. Right there and right there. Okay. And then I'm going to use the one that is the back side of my bag, which has no scabbing on it whatsoever. And I'll put position the last two squares on it. And that's what I'm going to use these other two holes for. And I'm going to position them where the, the slot faces up. Okay. This is the D rings to hang the bag to off its shoulder strap. So they'll face up towards me. So there you go. That's where the six, uh, six squares go. Now, we'll use this same template, though, to place our pocket. All right, so this is the front of my bag. It's got one skived side to it. Sorry, disregard. That is the middle pocket. It does not get one. Um, this is the front of my bag where I would already have two squares down here, but I didn't stick them on there yet. So I'm gonna turn it over, use this to sit on top of it, line it up all nice and pretty like, and then I'm gonna put my pocket right there. Isn't it amazing how that works out? And the same thing, I'm gonna, I'll, but this one I'll put tape, I'll just go ahead and do it since I got it lined up anyway. I'm going to put tape on three sides of this one, across the bottom and up the two sides. Um, if I put it on all four sides, then my pocket would not have an opening, and it is now not a pocket, it's just a patch. So, you know, we need it to be a pocket. So that rounded curve down there is the bottom of the pocket. Okay, and it doesn't get, um, it's, it's gonna be towards the bottom of the bag. The rounded curve here is the bottom of the bag. So, yeah, go ahead and just pull the tape off the back of these. There we go. Now, there's two ways to sew this on. We'll just go ahead and talk about that. One way would be that I could just, when I put it in my sewing machine or hand stitch it, I could just do it from this side and then everything would look, you know, just fine and everything's gonna match up fine. But if you're brave enough, you can do what I'm gonna try to do. Okay, I'm gonna turn this thing over. I'm gonna line my template back up. I'm gonna take my scratch hole and I'm going to draw me a stitch line just inside the border line of the template. Okay, and again, I'm just running the scratch all to where I know that it's inside the stitch line, or the, the line where that piece is on the back of it. 
and then we'll see how lucky we get when we uh, when we're done. But now you can see the line I just did. I just put my hand over a candle here. <laughs> Scared the heck out of me. So anyway, you can see the line I just did, and when I sew that, that should catch that backside too. I don't like to do a lot of blind stitching like that where I can't see what I'm sewing to it, but since this is the front of the bag, even though it's hidden by the flap 99% of the time, I want to try it out. And uh, I've gotten lucky with the two of these I've made so far um, after the patterning was done, um, but we'll, we'll see. All right, so again, I'm gonna stick all those on there just like I told you about, and when we come back, we're gonna be at the sewing machine. And also, I forgot my microphone, so I'll have that on and you won't hear the echo that you hear right now. Be right back. All right, so here I am at my Cobra Class 18 machine. I'm using a size 20 needle with a size 138 chestnut colored thread. I would really love to do a contrasting stitch on this, like a natural colored thread, but I, if you use a, a, a darker thread on a darker leather, then any mistakes you might make aren't gonna show up quite as well. And when I'm doing one for a video, I make lots of mistakes because I'm paying more attention to what I'm showing the video than I am actually doing my project. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and, and do what I need to do to make sure it looks right. <laughs> and I'll use the darker thread. So anyway, again, Cobra Class 18, 138 thread, 30, uh, 20 needle. Okay, if I were hand sewing this, I'd be using like a 0.8 millimeter or a 0 0.02 uh, inch um, size hand sewing thread, and I'd be going somewhere around seven stitches per inch. Okay, now um, again, we've got six of these squares to, uh, to sew on, and then we also have our, our pocket piece to sew on. Okay, and I'm just gonna, for the camera, I'm gonna sew the pocket piece on, I'm gonna sew one of the squares, and then I'm not gonna make you watch me sew the other five squares, because it's the exact same thing all over again. Um, so we'll just do the one. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with this pocket piece here, and I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit so that you can have a better view of what we're doing, where, uh, where the business end is here, okay? And I'm just gonna make sure and follow that, that stitch line that I scribed, because when I feel under there, I can feel that that stitch line is well onto that pocket. So as long as I follow it, then in theory, everything should be fine. We shall see. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start out with a, uh, a couple of back stitches here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go forward. So just like this. Okay, I'm gonna stitch along and using my uh, my needle as my guide right there on that uh, that line that I drew. And anytime you're using a sewing machine, especially if you're new at it, one thing you have to learn is that the sewing machine is gonna feed the material. There's no issue with that. All you have to do is hold it out here on the edges and, and keep it straight left to right. Um, the, the machine will take care of the rest. It'll, it'll do your stitch length. If you go to pushing and pulling on your stuff and everything, then you'll find that your stitches aren't very even and your sewing machine's gonna cause you some problems when really it's, it's you causing the sewing machine problems. Um, I always tell people, let, let the sewing machine be the alpha dog for a minute and you just do what it takes to support the alpha dog. Okay, and at the very end, so I'm gonna do me a couple of back stitches here and we'll see how we did. We'll turn it over and we'll all get to see it at the same time. No, no trick photography, we'll see if I got my stitch line where I needed it or not. Okay, we'll clip the little extra threads here. All right, so there's what I could see while I was sewing. And there's what I could not see while I was sewing. And I'd say I did pretty good. Maybe I got it a little bit high right here on the, on the bottom part, but uh, cosmetically, it, I mean, that's fine. That's no big deal. It's not crooked. Um, I didn't accidentally run off of the pocket on the back side while I was uh, sewing. So I would say that was a pretty good success right there. Okay, now I'm gonna do around one of these squares here just to show you how it's done or how I do it, I guess you should say. Um, 
I always start, I never start right in a corner. I always start a little bit off of a corner and um, just kind of start stitching. I'm going to go all the way around it and then when I get back to my very first couple of stitches, I will over stitch them, which is to go back over the first couple of stitches. And that's the same as if I had gone into reverse to lock my stitches in. Okay, when I get to the corners, I make sure I make all of my um, turning motions with my needle down in the leather. Um, and that helps to keep my stitch length consistent. If I make my turning motions with the needle up in the air, my, I'll have little bitty stitches, then I'll have great big stitches, and they just won't be consistent and nice. Okay. So I'm back to where my first stitch was. I'm going to go back, put my needle directly into that first stitch, and then I'll just do a couple of stitches over um, to lock everything into place. There we go. I'll show you what that looks like. And then once again, I'm going to sew the other five of these on, uh, but I'm not going to make you watch. If you need to see it again, then please rewind the video a couple of minutes. This is going to be a long enough video as it is. There should be. So we'll be back. Thanks. All right, so there we go. Um, I did all six of the squares plus the pocket piece that we sewed on together. So there's what my flap looks like now. Okay, then this is the back piece. And then this right here is the front panel that goes underneath the flap. And this one is what we're gonna be working on next. I'm gonna turn it to where that's the top of it. It's facing you. Okay, now we need this piece right here. It's got four holes punched in it. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our Sam Brown uh, studs on this piece, and then we're going to stick it to this piece, and then we're going to sew, just sew two strips along the top, basically. And this does a couple of things. One, it holds the Sam Brown studs on, obviously. But then also, since this bag doesn't have like a lot of rolled edges and things like that, it needs structure in certain places. And this will give it some structure, but yet it still maintains its rugged appearance. Cause again, we're not doing a lot of rolled edges and, and fancy things like that. So we'll just have two naked pieces of leather sewn together nice and tight, and that'll give it the structure it needs and the strength it needs, um, but still have that ruggedness to it. So here I've got some Sam Brown studs. Uh, these are what we call the medium size. I don't really know what that means. I do know that, um, on these pieces, I can use the number five Tandy uh, Sam Brown uh, button ma hole maker thing, and it works fine. Um, otherwise, uh, if I'm just punching a hole, I'd punch about an eighth of an inch hole and then put me a, see where the little cut is right there. That helps that to go on these studs. Um, so yeah, like an eighth inch hole, maybe a tiny bit bigger, and then a tiny little cut right beside it. Um, but anyway, but on this piece, it's just, a small hole so that you can apply the Sam Brown stud. Then I also have, this is basically just some super glue here. Okay, because I want to, um, the backs of these screws, these are screw back ones. These screws are gonna be sewn between two pieces of leather. And once they're on there, I won't be able to like retighten them or anything like that later. So what I wanna do is just put a drop of glue in that Sam Brown stud. Just one little drop will do, okay. And then I'm going to screw it on and I'll use a screwdriver to get it as tight as I can. And then that glue is gonna make that sucker permanent. It's not going anywhere. But I need to work quickly because that glue doesn't take long to set up either. Uh, super glue's a, an amazing thing. I think that's why they call it super, right? So there you go. There's one of them, but I need four. Okay, I gotta do that same thing three more times. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna pause the camera right quick to do that. And then when I come back, we'll stick this on here. And then I'm just gonna walk over to the sewing machine and stitch that sucker down right quick. No reason to make y'all, uh, to move all the camera and everything and make you make me watch, make you watch me do it. There we go. Um, Cause again, I'm, I'm gonna sew just two lines, that's it. Um, but I'll be to get to that part in just a moment. Okay, so I got four Sam Brown studs there. Okay, and again, all I'm gonna do is put some double-sided tape on the back of this thing. 
and I'm going to butt it right up against the very top of the uh, the top of my front panel here. And then I'm just going to, I'll start with a back stitch, so all the way across and back stitch at the end, and I'll do that at the top and the bottom of it. And that's it. That, that's all I'm doing. When I uh, come back from the sewing machine, I'll show you what that looks like, and uh, we'll continue on. All right, so here we are. I uh, sewed that piece on. There it is right there. Again, I just sewed one end to the other. All right, and then as I was putting it together, it stretched a little bit wider than the, uh, the bag uh, body itself. That's no big deal. I'm just going to take and lop that off with a pair of scissors here, that extra little bit. All going to be hidden inside of a seam later on, okay? So, um, it's probably a good time to just go ahead and uh, rivet our D-rings and stuff onto these pieces. And that way we don't forget to do it um, and then it become too late once we start assembling the bag. So again, I've got me just a strap of leather. It's about four to five ounce or so. And that's what I'm gonna use to, uh, to cut all these pieces off of that I'm gonna do this with. And um, generally it's, it's between three and four inches is what it takes. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me grab my, uh, my hole punch and my uh, uh, cutting board right quick and I'll grab it. All right, grab me a cutting board here. Now, what I wanna do is um, a piece like a D-ring here is gonna be in, in this uh, strap that we're doing. So take it, fold it over, and then what's gonna happen is after I cut it, it's gonna go through one of those slots and push up underneath there and then rivet into place, okay? So I just kind of gauge how much room I might need to do that. And then I'm gonna take a, a one inch round punch here. And you don't have to use all this fancy, you could just use scissors and lop it right off. But, uh, so there's what I have right there. Okay, this ended up being just a little bit over three inches long um, once it was done. And what I'm gonna do is take a piece of double sided tape real quick and I'll show you how I, um, how I position one of these so that you can see how it goes. Okay, so this is a D-ring. Uh, the D-rings will be on the main flat or the, the main body front and back. Um, so here's my back panel right here. There's my my area for my D-ring right there. I'm gonna take this little scratch all and I'm just gonna open that up just a little bit so it's a little easier for me to, uh, to get into. And then I just take and push this sucker down in there, just like that. All right, now if it's having a hard time pushing in there, maybe this leather's a little bit soft or something, I'll even take and, and stab my, uh, my, my piece that I'm sliding under there and then push it with my, my scratch all um, all up underneath there so nobody will ever see it and that does just fine. Okay, and then what I'm gonna end up doing is putting a rivet right there and uh, that rivet will hold all of this together really nicely, um, but we'll get to that point. First, I need to make six of those little strap pieces that I just did, and uh, then we'll rivet one down and I'll show you where each of them go so that you uh, put the right ones in the right places. So once I've got those six of those little three inch pieces made up, they're actually about three and, three and a quarter, three and a half inches, um, then we'll be right back. All right. So I got all six of those cut out and then I went ahead and just put them on each of my little pieces and, and folded them over. Okay, now you'll have four of them on regular D-rings like that, but I only have two because my other two are gonna go on those fancy schmancy things that we talked about earlier that I'm gonna put on my very front of my bag. Um, and then two of them are gonna go on your, um, let me find where I put mine so that I can say it without confusing everybody. But not the, not the swivel hooks that swivel, but the regular snap hooks like these. These are what's going to be on the front of the bag if you got the kit. If you didn't get the kit, then hey, you can put whatever you want on the front of your bag. Um, so anyway, on the back of the bag, we're going to have two D-rings. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get those two D-rings and put them on there. I don't know why I pulled that one out that I did earlier, but whatever. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to go ahead, and once I've got it into position, I'm just going to punch my hole and send my rivet through it to hold it into place, and then I'll go back and set all my rivets at once. 
Okay, but again, this is the back panel of the bag. And um, stretch that out a little bit. Put my D-ring in. Make sure it's in there good and tight. Once again, I'll take a, a, my scratch hole and push down underneath there, and that'll really get it in there good and tight. And uh, then we'll hang a, hang a rivet through it, okay? So there's those two. Now I'll set that one aside. This is the flap of my bag, okay? And on the flap of my bag, that's where I would put my little clasp, um, regular snap hook like this. And how it orientates, it'll orientate just like this, where the opening of it is actually facing the bag. Okay, but again, I'm using a different clasp, and so that's why I wanted to show you that. Okay, so let me stretch these out a little bit. And technically, I could do this one after the entire bag is put together, um, just because of the idea that, I mean, it's just the flap. I can do it at any time. It's always going to be flat and whatever. Um, but if I'm doing all the others, I might as well do this one too, yeah? Now this one, I cut, uh, cut this thing a little bit too long. So I'm gonna shorten that real quick. That's what happens when you're not actually measuring things. You're just kind of putting things together sometimes. There we go. Took a little bit of length off of it. I'm gonna do it again. Again, I want to get this sucker in there as tightly as I can. Like that. Now we're good. Now again, I'll poke a hole and send a rivet through it. And same thing, other side. Little stretch, pull it out. Um, now this one swivels. I don't like that it swivels, but it does, and it's the only one I could find. So um, it's it's just gonna have to be okay that it swivels. And I, uh, but that why I was telling you that is because I don't have to worry about its orientation as I'm applying it. I don't have to make sure that it's facing up or down or whatever, because it'll swivel. There we go. Once again, punch a hole, send a rivet through it. Now the front panel of the bag will have the regular D-rings on it. Okay, I'm using these little things though. So we're gonna stretch it out, put that in. Again, these are a little bit too long, so I'm going to sh 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 shorten them a little bit. There we go. Better too long than too short. You can always shorten them. Can't really uh, lengthen them too much. Of course, that's one of my favorite Favorite things is Don Gonzalez's t-shirt and stickers that say measure measure twice, stretch to fit. That's as true as it gets. <laughs> All right, so put that in there. Put a rivet in it. And the same thing over here. There we go. Good and tight. All right. Now, I'll show you how to set one of these rivets, but um, if you can set one, you can set all six. So 
no reason to show you on six of them, right? So I've got my rivet here. I take my washer and put over it. Now rivet setters come in different shapes and sizes and forms. We've started carrying Buckle Guy's three-piece rivet setter, which is pretty awesome. But uh, the very first one is just gonna have a hole in it like that, okay? And some rivet setters are multi-purpose. It's one piece, but it's got a couple of different areas on it, I guess you could say. So that hole right there, this is a number nine rivet, goes over the, the post of the rivet. Now knock it down there nice and tight, just like that. Okay, once I've done that, I'm gonna take a giant pair of nippers like this. These are, I got these at Harbor Freight. These have the 17 inch handle and uh, these are great. And you're gonna give it a clip, okay? The brass rivets are really hard. Um, they're very hard metal compared to the copper rivets. And so I, I like these giant nippers. You can, you can cut the copper ones much easier than you can the big brass ones. Then I've got just a ball peen hammer here. Mine's fancy because it's a horseshoe brand one from uh, Jeremiah Watt, but uh, I also have regular ball peen hammers from the hardware store. But anyway, all I want to do is kind of mushroom out that post to where it's like that. Okay, and then once that's done, there's another part to the Buckle Guy Rivet Setter Set, and uh, it's the second part. There it is. And it just has a little bit of a dome to it. All right, and I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna set it over what I just mushroomed, and give it a couple more wax. And what it does is it really smooths out where I mushroomed that, and now when I run my finger over it, it doesn't like catch my finger nail, or my fingerprint, which means it also probably won't catch anything inside the bag or scratch up the bag. So I'm gonna do that on all the rivets. Um, I will say this again, this is a three part rivet setting set. If, uh, if these were copper rivets, I would use the third part, which is actually used to dome the outside of the rivet. But the brass ones are such a hard metal that uh, I haven't been able to make it work appropriately. So I just leave that third set out when I'm doing brass rivets, which is 99% of the time. I don't use many copper ones because um, I use brass hardware. Anyway, I'm gonna set those other five rivets and uh, when I come back, we're gonna start um, doing some more assembly on this bag. We're, we're, we're moving right along. All right, got all my rivet setting stuff out of the way. The next thing I need to do is build my gusset. Okay, and that's gonna be two pieces, well, four pieces. Um, <laughs> So the first thing I've got is my main bottom gusset piece, okay? That's the big long wide one here. Okay, and then I've got two um, side gussets. Okay, and they'll sew onto it right there at the ends. Now, again, I skived one side of this, so I need to make sure that when I put my side gussets to my bottom gusset, that the skives are on the same side. If I did this the other way around, then that won't work at all. I need to make sure that my skives are all on the same side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do though is, I'm going to take a ruler, if I have a ruler. Someone took my ruler. I swear I keep it within an arm's reach. I'll be back. All right, got my ruler. Now, these have about a 3 8 inch overlap, okay, for the side gusset to overlap the, uh, the top gusset. Okay, so this ruler has um, grid squares on it that are an eighth of an inch apart. So I'm just gonna measure out three of those little uh, lines and then I'm gonna use, I'll just use an ink pen and I'm gonna draw me a line on there. And then I'm gonna flip it around, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other end. There we go. Now, once again, keeping my, uh, my skives um, on the same side, I put a little piece of double-sided tape on the very end of this here, and I'm going to set that on there, even with the line, and stick it. Okay, now, if you cut these pieces out of different areas of your leather, you may want to turn them over before you do that, 
and decide which one should go on which end because maybe it matches up a little bit better. Leather, of course, has a lot of variation to it. Um, even within the same side of leather or height of leather, there's always a ton of variation in color and texture and things like that. So again, you, you may want to turn it over and look at the finished side and decide which, uh, which side your, uh, your gusset pieces go on before you just go all sticking them on there willy-nilly. Okay, I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch those little ends down, okay? Just a one stitch right across. Um, on some of these, I've even done two stitches just because of the idea that I, uh, I again, rugged old school look. Um, but on this one, I'm, I'm just gonna do one stitch. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna stitch those down right quick and uh, I'll start out with a back stitch, go all the way down it and then come back with a back stitch again. And uh, when I come back, we're going to talk about what to do with this, uh, this strip of welting right here. Okay, so we'll be right back. All right, I know I said that uh, I uh, was only going to do one stitch line, and I got over there and I got carried away, so I did, I did two stitch lines. Not a, not a huge thing, I just scooted over a little bit and then did another one. Um, but I really like the look of the two stitch lines as opposed to the one. Once again, we're looking at a bag that, you know, when it's brand new, it's supposed to already look 100 years old. So, actually, I don't know, 140, 150 years old? Late 1800s, maybe? Anyway, all right, so the next piece we're gonna grab is this big long piece here. I'm gonna zoom out on the camera because I wanna get the entirety of what I'm doing here. Now, roughly, if we overlapped those pieces, the, the right, then they, uh, your welting piece is going to be the same length, okay? And mine is within an eighth of an inch here. Um, if you didn't buy the kit, this welting piece is, is just over, it's about a, an inch wide. Um, sometimes I do inch and a quarter if I'm going to put a, a core in it and make it piping. Um, but anyway, this is a, it's about an inch wide. And what I need to do is take, and I'm going to practice just folding it in half long, lengthwise here, okay? Then I'm going to put a piece of double-sided tape in it, and I'm going to um, tape it closed that way. All right, now this entire step, the welting, is not a huge necessity, but it really does add to not just the look, but also the structure of the bag. Um, welting helps a, a softer bag to keep its, its form and its shape. Um, it helps to keep the... Uh, uh, the seam um, to where like your stitches won't show and stuff like that when you go to turn that that front panel right side out It makes it to where the uh, the stitching's not going to stretch and stuff like that. So It's again. It's not necessary, but it, it does add a lot to it if you're able to do it Okay, and it's it's not a difficult task to do um, Yeah so now I'm going to run me a uh, quarter inch double-sided tape right down the one edge of my uh, welted piece, welting piece. Man, I almost cut this double-sided tape the exact length I needed. That, uh, that never happens. I fashioned me a little uh, dispenser for my double-sided tape. That's why normally I have my roll out here. But I fashioned me a little dispenser that holds all of my sizes of double-sided tape handy for me. So no matter which size I'm wanting to use, I can grab one. All right, now... I'm not going to uncover all this tape at once. I just want to uncover a little of it at a time so that I can fold this thing in half without worrying about getting all wadded up and everything back here while I'm, I'm not at the working end. Okay. So I'm going to go along and I'm just going to pinch my uh, sides together here. Then when I get to the point where I need to um, pull some more tape off, then I will. Go down, and I'm not worried about pinching every little millimeter of it or whatever, or, um, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little edge, my uh, my squeaky toy, my my metal roller, and just roll it down right quick, and that will 
help secure that tape really well. And then we're going to do what's called a basting stitch and stitch this to the front panel of the bag. Now, if you are hand sewing this, a basting stitch is not as uh, efficient, I guess you could say, um, just because of the idea that that's a whole nother big old stitch line that you have to do as you're going down. And um, I, I meant to say it back when I sat down at the sewing machine for the first time, this, this bag can entirely be hand stitched. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I actually had a guy comment on my YouTube channel the other day that he's like, oh, you keep saying that you can hand stitch these projects, but I don't think you can. He's like, you should try it sometime. Dude, I promise you, I have not made a thing yet that hasn't, hadn't been able to be hand stitched. And uh, I use a sewing machine because it's quicker and more efficient. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the, how it works is if it can be sewn on a machine, it can be sewn by hand. If, uh, but it doesn't always work the other way around. Just because it can be sewn by hand doesn't mean it can be sewn on the machine. So anyway. All right, so now I'm gonna take and I'm going to um, grab some of my clips and I'm gonna clip this welting to my front panel of my bag, okay? So, got me a whole box of clips over here. All right, and I'm just gonna start at one end and when I do this, I'm gonna clip it to where, let me zoom back in now that we're when I do this, I want that folded edge facing the center of the bag, not facing the edge, okay? And I'm just gonna place clips every uh, few inches or whatever. Um, I am just kind of holding it in place so that I can do my basting stitch, okay? And this thing's gonna get real thick real quick because of this, uh, this welting here. Now, depending on how stretchy the leather you're using is, you can help it to go around this corner down here by giving it just tiny little snips in the edge of it. Um, and it, it'll help it to lay flat. Uh, you know, if you, if you look, when I go around this corner, it wants to bubble up like that. But if I do some tiny little snips out here at the very back end, okay, and very tiny, you don't want them to go very too far because they might end up being in your, uh, your finished project, but uh, anyway, if I do some tiny ones way back here, that'll help that to lay flat as I go around that corner. It just relieves some of the, the tension that that leather has on it as it tries to force itself around that corner. See, now it's gonna lay much more flatly. It still has a little bit of a bubble to it, but it's nothing like what it was before. So, there we go. And again, this is the front panel of my bag that I'm doing this to. Um, this bag only has one welt. We're doing a different kind of seam in the back of the bag. Um, uh, so yeah, the front one is the only one that has a skive or anything like that. The back one doesn't have any of that. It's just two thick old pieces of leather sewn together. Okay. Moving right along here, I'm down to the other corner, so I need to do the same thing and just create those little cuts. Really helps to have a good, sharp pair of heavy scissors to do things like this. Actually, I think when the scissors get this big, they call them shears and not scissors, but whatever. It looks like scissors to me. Okay. So, here we go, around that second side. And we are gonna go over to the sewing machine together. I'm gonna show you this the basting stitch. Um, and then I'm going to sew uh, the, 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 that edge gusset on here. I'll do all of that over there at the machine. And there we go, all the way to the end. Nothing to it, right? 
Now we're going to get all happy on our sewing machine. So when we get back, that's where we'll be. All right, so for this basting stitch, all we're doing is holding this welting to the, the main body here so that when we go to put our, our gusset on in a minute, we're not trying to hold three different pieces of leather, we're just trying to hold two, okay? That's all a basting stitch is. It's just a temporary hold um, for the next piece. So all I'm gonna do is come out here and I wanna stitch this thing just as close to the edge as I can. Even if I run off the edge for a couple of stitches, no big deal, because all we're doing is holding this and this stitch will be inside of another seam later. No one will ever, ever, ever see it. Okay, so I'm not gonna put a lot of thought into it. I'm not gonna put a lot of work into it. I'm just gonna sew. The only thing I'm gonna do is make sure that the edge of my welting keeps lining up with the edge of my bag. I get to a clip, I pull it off, I keep going. Okay, I'm going around the corner, I'm gonna go nice and slow. I don't wanna run off too much. Way there, folks. Around on that last corner. And onto the home stretch. That last little straightaway there. All right, and then when you get to the end, if you notice, my little welting piece is a little bit longer than my uh, um, front piece, and that's okay. What I'm going to do is just trim it off in a second. No big deal. Okay, so there we go. That was my basting stitch. Now I need to get ready to um, apply the, the front piece, or the... the front panel to the uh, gusset. All right, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here so that you can see me stick this thing together. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna take this gusset, I'm gonna fold it in half, and then I'm just gonna put me a little marker mark at that fold, and that way I know where my center is on this thing. Okay, so little marker mark, little marker mark. That'll help me keep the front and back of my bag nice and straight and together. Now I'm gonna fold my front panel together in half and put the same little marker mark on it. Now when I clip it together, I'm gonna clip those, those two areas together first. Okay, 
So the skived side of my, uh, my gusset is what's gonna go against this front panel here, just like this. I'll put a clip on it and then I'm just going to work my way up around the edges from there. So I'll work my way up one side and then I'll work my way over to the other side. And when I get to these corners, what I'll do is I kind of stretch that skived area just a little bit to help it bend around those corners good. And clip it together. Then over here on this straight edge, I don't really need to put near as many clips. And it's going to go, I mean, this sucker is lining up just perfectly here at the very top. If it doesn't line up just perfectly um, and your ends don't match up just right, then there might need to be some adjustment, but clip up the entire thing before you decide that. Okay, so now I got to clip up the other side here. I didn't bring enough clips to the sewing machine. It doesn't take near as many clips to hold my uh, welt on as it does to um, put my, um, my gusset on. So I'm gonna have to grab me some more clips right quick. No big deal. All right, so I'm gonna go grab some more clips and then I'll be back. All right, I came back over here with my clips and I talked to the camera for like another few minutes and then I realized that didn't hit record. So, take two. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I finished, I went ahead and finished clipping up my bag. Okay, and as you can see, that welting's still sticking up right there. That's okay. I'll trim that off after I sew in a minute, okay? Um, but then I went ahead, since I wasn't recording anyway, I went ahead and just took the time to um, put my welting foot on my sewing machine, okay? And a welting foot is uh, a nice little thing to have, um, but it, uh, it basically, it's wider on one side, and it also, it has, it has a groove underneath it for a welt or a pipe to go underneath. And it kind of helps you keep your place, I guess, while you're, uh, while you're doing welting or piping. Now, all that being said, I sewed my first many, many, many pieces of welting and piping without any special feet, because I didn't know they existed. And, um, yeah, it was uh, David at Leather Machine Company. I was showing him one of my uh, pieces one day, and he was like, oh, well, which, which welting feet did you use? I'm like, what? And that's when he let me know that the Leather Machine Company sells welting and piping feet, and they are pretty cool. So, there we go. Now, when I am sewing in my welting or piping, I want to make sure that I... Uh, that, that the edge of that welting is right up underneath that, that, that groove in the foot, okay? And if you've got one of these feet sitting in front of you, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But when I do this particular bag, and even better, this particular seam on this bag, first thing I do is I pull a couple of feet of extra thread out. Why is my bobbin thread hung up? That's weird. Let's see what's going on here. I don't know why my bobbin thread's hung up, but it's a good thing we're finding that out right this minute. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm gonna pull a couple of feet of thread out because I'm actually going to hand finish, uh, hand sew my very last couple of stitches on here to, to, to um, lock them in. And I'll show you what I mean afterward. But I need a couple of feet of thread to make sure I can do that. Okay, so got me some nice big long tails of thread here. I mean, they're, you know, about two feet and that'll be plenty. Now, that being said, I'm just gonna start stitching. I'm not gonna start with a back stitch, okay? So I'm just gonna start stitching going forward 
and uh, then I'll go back to the bench in a minute and I'll hand sew that very last little bit and um, it'll, I'll show you how that works. So if you don't want to do all that craziness, you can feel free to just back stitch right here and then go forward again, but it's not what I'm going to do. So here we go. Stitchy stitch. Okay, and again, I'm making sure that my little welting foot is uh, right on the edge of my welt and I'm going along. If you don't have welting feet, then you just make sure that the edge of your, uh, your center foot is right at the edge of your welt and everything will be just fine. Okay, I'm going to go real slow this entire stitch line though because it's a very important one and if I get off track or screw it up, it will definitely be seen in my finished product. And I don't want that. Again, this one should be a shop display if I do it right. If I don't do it right, it'll just be a bag that probably sits in the back seat of my truck full of whatever. So here I'm stitching along, taking my time, staying on the edge of my welt. All excited about how pretty this is gonna be when it's done. I'm sorry, I said pretty. What I meant was manly and bad A. All right, when I get down here to the corner, what I like to do is I'll sew as far as I can, and then when it seems like I really need to turn, I'll take and I'll press down the leather, like right here, but I'll pull it up behind where I've already sewn, and that'll help me to work this around the presser foot and around that corner there, okay? Um, if I need to lift my presser foot, I do, but I make sure that my needle is down in my leather when I do that. And that way I don't lose my place and I don't accidentally screw up my stitch line um, by lifting my presser foot, okay? So I'm gonna do a couple more stitches here. Let's take this clip out. The corners are definitely the hardest part when you're dealing with piping and welting, but it's still not unmanageable by any means. It's just a little bit more tricky to keep it smooth. The biggest thing is you do not want to sew any kind of a fold or a bubble into the bag. If you sew a fold into it, you'll never get that back out. Uh, when you turn it right side out, you will see a crease there and you'll be kicking yourself for the entirety of that bag um, because you, you could have worked a little bit more to get that out of there before you uh, stitched it up. Okay, so here we go. Almost through the corner, almost through the scary part. There we go. Back onto the straightaway. So I'm just gonna sew to the next corner and then I'll worry about it again there. <laughs> Once you've done the corner, you get some confidence on the straightaways. <laughs> You go a little bit quicker. I think I need to grease the hinge on my treadle pedal down there because man, that sucker sure is squeaking every time I <laughs> move my foot. All right, almost to the next corner. And we'll treat it the exact same way. I'll kind of prepare to get into it here by pressing that leather down. Start unclipping. Okay, 
Okay, I'm, I need to make some adjustments, but I'm going to put my needle back down in my leather before I do. Because again, I, I don't want to lose my stitch place. Sorry, I know my hand's right in the way there. All right. And here we go. Back up the other side, and then I want to remember once again when I get to the other side, I don't want to just clip my threads off. I want to make sure and uh, pull a pull a couple of feet of thread out of it, and that way I can uh, do the same thing on this end that I'm doing on the other end with my hand sewn um, finish. All the way to the edge. Okay, so there we are. I'm at the very end. I'm going to pull my thread. I'm going to pull a lot of thread. There we go. And then I'll clip it off. We'll go back over to the bench and I'll show you what I'm going to do with all that thread. All right, so real quick before I start hand sewing that piece, um, there's that little bit of welting that was sticking out the, uh, the end, okay? I just need to lop that off right quick. No big deal. Same thing with if your, um, your gusset was longer than your, your body, um, then you want to lop that off a little bit. Uh, mine, mine lined up pretty well, and uh, so that's okay as far as that's concerned. But, um, let me get back on camera here. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can, there we go. All right. So I want to make sure that those long threads I have are out of the way. I've got me a very sharp knife here. And I'm just going to take and slice that welt right off. Okay. Now that's trash. So over to the stitch and clamp we go. My camera's letting me know that it needs a new battery, so I'll be back. All right, new battery in place. Okay, so I'm going to take my bag and I'm going to put it in my stitching clamp here. I'm going to make sure I can get to my last three or four stitches right there on the end. Clamp it in. All right, and I'm going to take me some hand sewing needles and I'm going to thread my sewing machine thread into those hand sewing needles. Got my needles threaded. Now, what I'm going to do is cross these two over on the top. And I'm going to go back and just hand sew my back stitches and pull it good and tight. And that's really going to help hold the top of this bag together in this location. Uh, on the back side of the bag, we're actually going to put a rivet in a similar area. And uh, that'll help hold it all together there. But anytime you're doing a bag like this, the opening is, of course, going to be a weak spot that you don't want your stitching to fail on you. And this just kind of ensures that that won't happen. There we go. So right up over the top, squeeze it nice and tight. And then again, I'm going to do two or three back stitches here. Just using the same holes that my machine made for me. Okay. If the thread gets too tight in there, you may want to use a pair of pliers or something to help you pull through. Sometimes I have to, sometimes I don't. Today seems to be a good day as far as not having to, but I don't want to speak too early either. <laughs> All right, so that was two stitches, but I want to do three. And then I'll tie the, or I'll uh, cut these ends off and we'll call it good. 
Then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. But again, no need to make you watch me do it. This video is definitely gonna be long enough as it is. There we go. When I come back, we're gonna start putting the backside together. See you then. All right, so here we are. We did our uh, hand-stitched uh, backing there, or back stitch, I guess you could say. Now I'm gonna take and just turn this thing right side out because we're done with it being inside out and we'll see how we did. All right, my welt looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna take and I'm just gonna pinch along that, uh, that seam to really stretch that sucker on there good. And uh, yeah. There we go. There's what that looks like. Okay. Once this thing gets sewn to the back of the bag, it will uh, look even better. So, moving on. Um, we're going to set that to the side here. We need to look at the back of the bag, and we also need to look at our little pocket here, our uh, laptop pocket or, or tablet pocket. Let me. So the laptop pocket, we need to fold down the top of it for a rolled edge. And again, this, this bag's supposed to be rugged. It doesn't have a lot of rolled edges and stuff, which, you know, I, I, I'm conflicted with. I, uh, I love the finish and, and, and um, finesse, I guess, of a, uh, like a rolled edge and all the finished uh, parts. But again, this one's supposed to be rugged. So... However, I did do a rolled edge for this part because when you go to stick something inside the bag, if you don't have some firmness at the top of your pocket, then it's just going to kind of collapse if you bump into it with whatever you're trying to stick in there. So since it's inside the bag, I don't really mind that it doesn't really match the rest of the motif with its rolled edge and its fanciness. Okay, but I'm going to take, I got some double sided tape on there and I'm just going to take it and Roll it over, and then I'm going to go over to the sewing machine, and I'm just going to run me a stitch line right down it. Nothing to it. But while I'm over at the sewing machine, I might as well do more than one thing, right? Oprah calls it multitasking. <laughs> so uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to sew my... Where are you at? There you are. I want to sew my, uh, my hinge piece onto the back, like so. All right, so all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put some, uh, some tape on one side of my hinge, just towards the bottom. If you notice, it's, it is not squared on the edges. The back of this is wider than the flap of this. So this is the transition piece that goes from one of those to the other, all right? I'm going to take and put this just kind of right at the bottom of the flap. Or the bottom of the hinge, sorry. And then you can measure it if you like. Um, but uh, basically I want to, this thing's about an inch and three-eighths or so. Let's actually measure it. Yeah, it's about an inch and three-eighths wide. Um, so I want to uh, I want to make sure that half of it is covered up by this, and then the other half of it's covered up by the, the actual the flap, okay? So an inch and three-eighths uh, divided by two, that's 11 eighths divided by two, holy crap. Um, we're not gonna make it exactly in half. <laughs> But we are going to draw a, consist a consistent line down it just to make sure that we got the right spot all the way down it. So I'm just going to take my scratch hole here and scribe me a line down it. 
Um, and this line is just under three quarters of an inch, um, but that's, that's middle enough. It doesn't have to be right in the center. But again, when I get into 16th, I'm like, we are splitting hairs and I am not worried about it. Okay, so. There we go. Sticking her down. Now I'm gonna do two stitch lines on this bad boy. Okay, I will do one close to the bottom and I'll do one close to the top. But first I'm gonna make sure that, yep. I wanna make sure that I was not over where my D-rings, um, the, the squares for my D-rings are. I wanted it to butt up almost to it, but not go over it. And that would be a nice way to do that is you could just butt it up to those D-rings right there, okay? So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna scribe me another line that I can use for my, my s s stitch line on this. Um, so that I, I don't um, get it crooked when I put it in the machine here in a minute. This thing's a little bit curved, so I'm gonna... There we go. All right, so I'm gonna sew right along that very bottom edge, but then I'm gonna do another one just a half an inch or so above it um, to make sure that sucker's good and on there. Um, because, you know, you don't want, when you like open the bag all the way up and you pull the flap all the way back, you don't wanna pull it apart and see the, the double-sided tape and stuff inside there. So you wanna just go ahead and sew that thing firmly on there. So I'll do two, two, two stitch lines, okay? Um, again, I'm gonna also, stitch that rolled edge that I did there. And since I'll be at the sewing machine, I might as well go ahead and take my front flap and attach it also underneath here. Okay, and all I'm gonna do is I'll butt it up to where that other piece is under there. And I'll do two more stitch lines to make it, uh... yeah. And since we're doing so much, we will move the camera back over to the, to the sewing machine. So we'll be over there. All right, got my feet changed. So, um, and also I forgot to mention those are quarter inch piping feet that I use, in case you were wondering. All right, so this is my uh, tablet sleeve, okay? And I'm just gonna stitch across the top of it. It's all I'm doing. Do a little bit of back stitching, hold my finger there as an edge guide and We go get to the very end here I'll do another back stitch clip it off all right we'll set that aside for now now this one again we've marked uh, we're gonna do two stitch lines um, on it and then we're going to put the flap on it and do two more stitch lines. So I'm going to start out with my first stitch line which will be just at the very very bottom of it attaching it to the uh, the back piece here. Okay, a couple of back stitches and away we go. And I'm just using the edge of my uh, center foot as a guide on against the edge of the hinge piece so that I know where to go. action cool now pull it out and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on that other line I drew if you notice though mine now has two lines I just took a pair of wing dividers and did a similar line off the top because I'm gonna do two stitch lines also for the flap another one of those things I just instinctively did it and then I was like oh yeah I was supposed to do that on camera I bet Apologize. All right, so we'll backstitch some more. 
And then we're going to run right down that line. stitch at the end. Now, I also, before I walked over here, put a piece of double-sided tape on the back of my hinge where it's going to attach to the, uh, the flap, okay? So I'm gonna take my flap, lay it along there, get everything lined up, let me there we go. I'm going to take my flap, lay it along there, get everything nice and centered and ready to go. Then I'll just reach under there and remove that, that double-sided tape backing. Of course it moved. Why wouldn't it? Up. I just want the flap right up against the uh, the back of the bag there. Go all the way down it, and then make sure that the edge of that uh, hinge isn't sticking out um, past the edge of the flap anywhere. Okay, or on the on the ends. Now I've got two more stitch lines. One of them will be right at the edge of the flap, and the other one will be um, the one I drew. Sorry, I seem really scatterbrained today. I don't know why I can't concentrate on important things like words. But the show must go on, right? All right. Going to backstitch. And we're going to run this stitch right along the very edge. There we go. Couple of back stitches. Call that good. And then we're going to do the exact same thing one more time on that other line that we drew with the wing dividers earlier. Didn't quite cut. There we go. Okay, going back down the other side. We're getting really close to being done here, guys. Once we sew the gusset and front piece onto the back piece, then we just got to worry about shoulder straps. go all right back to the uh, workbench because now we have to do some more riveting to uh, put some other pieces onto it the handle and such actually I'm gonna bring the handle over here right quick I just need to take that handle piece and fold it in half and sew it um, we'll go to the workbench first it needs to be measured anyway we'll be right back 
All right, so now we're gonna work on this handle piece right quick, okay? And currently this handle piece is about 13 and a half inches long, and that's too long. Um, this was uh, just something I had a clicker at for, uh, this piece right here. But what I want is I want it to attach about there. And this is one of those personal preference guesstimation type things. Um, but I'm gonna end up folding this in half and sewing it. But then I want it to, to be about, about there. I don't want it too big. It's not gonna be its main source of carrying is by the handle. I want it to where I can put a couple of fingers in it and grab it off a table or something if I need to. And that's about it. So I'm gonna take and cut about that much of it off. And that is about two and a half inches or so off of it, okay? Um, first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm going to take a piece of double-sided tape and put down the center of it and fold it in half. And uh, then I'm gonna end up using a, uh, a round punch to lop off the end of it. So we'll take our double-sided tape. Grab my cutting board here. Okay, I'm gonna fold it in half, pinch it together like we have uh, on a couple other things before, like our welting. And then I'm gonna take a round punch and knock off the two ends of it to about the width I want. And then I'm gonna quickly run over there to the sewing machine and sew this sucker shut before that tape doesn't hold it anymore. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna run over there and I'm gonna sew this up right quick. Um, no need to take the camera with me. I'm literally just gonna sew from one end to the other, back stitching on both ends, and I'll be right back. All right, got that stitched up. Now, again, I'm just gonna put it on here and I want to rivet it, and I wanna rivet it between these bottom two sew lines here. Okay, I don't want it up here where it might be in the gap in between the, uh, the flap and the main body. I want it down here where I know it's just going into that main body piece. And uh, again, I'm gonna make it pretty, uh, pretty close to center. I don't want it way out here on the ends because I've, I've got other things that have to rivet out there. Um, so I want it in here, okay? Now, I haven't done this yet, but I'm gonna try it on this one, but I'm actually, I'm shortening it a little bit more and I'm gonna leave these little flappy flaps hanging and again, more of the rustic thing. I, I don't know. I'm just trying new stuff <laughs> with this. Um, I could put it to where the bottoms of the, uh, the strap were flush with the bottom of that strap right there. But uh, I'm just going to try this. We'll see how it looks. If I don't like it, I may try to trim it later. But uh, we'll see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Let me punch me a hole in the... Let me move this out of my way. I'm do dangerous things here. Um, punch me two holes in this thing. And then where they're even with each other. And then I need to figure out where on the bag I want it and punch those holes too. Okay. So I could easily measure this. Or I can sit there and kind of wing it and look at it and be like, yeah, it looks good right there. And that's what I'm going to do because I'm dangerous like that. <laughs> so I'm going to get it to where about where I want it. I'm just going to hold both pieces down with one hand. I'll mark me some areas for my holes. 
And again, uh, don't get me wrong, you should measure this if you're not good at just eyeballing stuff. Uh, over the years, I've gotten to where I can, I can eyeball stuff pretty dang good. So, yeah, I'm eyeballing it. If you'd like my measurement, that is... about five inches in from each end. Okay, now we're gonna rivet this bad boy on here, same way we riveted stuff before. Just like that. Let's take my rivets through. I need to turn it over so that I can uh, get my anvil under it and uh, rivet it on. So once again, you've watched me set rivets before. If you want to watch again, here we go. If you don't want to watch again, fast forward about one minute and I'll probably be done with them. Now we have a handle. It's magical, isn't it? There should be, just like that. Okay? Still a little bit longer than I even wanted. I probably could have cut two more inches off of it and been happy, but it is what it is. I'll know next for the next one. Um, again, the, the handle measurement was not a part of the pattern uh, because it's, it's subjective. It's a one inch strap times as long as you want it to be. So. Yeah. All right. So the next thing we need to do is attach the front to the back. The moment we've all been waiting for, right? Let's build a bag. Now we can glue this if we want, or we can clip it. And I'm a big fan of the clips because I don't want the glue to ever seep into my bag and me not be able to uh, you know, when you're done sewing and everything, you see glue and stuff in there, and I, I just don't like that. Oh, whew, I nearly messed up bad. Um, don't forget your laptop sleeve. Now what I will do is tape this one in, okay? It's gonna go just right here, nothing, nothing hard about it. We put it right in there, tape it down, face down, or uh, want um, flesh side to flesh side, okay? There we go. And again, I'm gonna tape mine, so make it a little easier to hold. Now I don't mind using the tape on this part because it won't be seen um, in the finished, uh, finished bag. I mean, you could spread that sucker open pretty wide and you still probably wouldn't see the tape. but I won't use tape on the final seam to attach the gussets to the back like this. And these three pieces in the back here, the this one, the back piece and the gusset all being sewn together, that's what's gonna give this bag some real structure. Uh, right now it's still pretty dang floppy. But these three being sewn together is going to make it a uh, nice and rigid or at least as rigid as we want it i mean we don't want it to be completely stiff that's a different style of bag i 
There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of get this where I want it. Much like this. And then I'm going to just fold it back and take that bottom row of tape off. Stick that on there, and then I don't worry about it not lining up for the rest of it, you know? And then just set all the edges together nice and flat. There we go. All right. Just like that, right? Now, time to start putting this sucker on here. Okay, and I'm just going to start by clipping together the top corners. As soon as I find my clips on each side. And work my way down to the center. Now you can start with your center and work your way up. It doesn't matter. But since your centers are well defined and your edges are well defined, Everything should line up just fine by starting up here and working your way down. And I wasn't sure how much I was going to like this one made out of this leather, but boy, I'm sure liking it so far. That's a pretty cool bag. It's manly and bad A, right? Real dude bag. This doesn't hold makeup. This holds guns. <laughs> All right, and then I'm just gonna kind of center this right and left and throw a, throw, a, throw, a, throw, a, throw, <clears throat> throw a clip into the middle down here and then I'll work my corners in and all that. Okay, now this seems like it would be a difficult um, seam to stitch, but it's really not. It's really not difficult at all. It, uh, even with the sewing machine, I mean, it's just gonna breeze right around those corners. It'll actually be easier than the welted corners in the front of the bag. So don't worry. Sorry, I'm pushing it off the edge of the table so I can Get a couple of clips on here. There we go. Okay, I'll work my way around, just clip my corners together and everything. And you just gotta kinda stretch the gusset and flatten it out around those corners because that's how it's gonna have to sit. Try to keep your edges as flat to each other as you can and you won't have as much trim work to do when it's all said and done to make those edges look pretty. Okay, this bag does not get um, token oil and all that to, uh, to make your, your edges look pretty. So you really should try to line them up as best you can while you're sewing so that, uh, so that your end result will look good. Okay, there's one side all clipped up. Okay, and again, you just wanna make sure not to put any wrinkles or any, any um, folds or anything like that into it. And then once you stitch that up, it'll, uh, it'll do fine. Okay, so now I gotta come over here and I gotta do this corner. Flatten it all up to each other. All right.
right, just like this. We're gonna go back over to the sewing machine. We're gonna sew this one together. And I'm gonna show you once again, a neat little trick that we're gonna do at the very top corners of it to, uh, to make it really, really strong so that it doesn't stretch off, okay? So back to the machine we go. All right, so I have switched sides uh, with the camera on the sewing machine so that you'll get a better view of what's going on because if the camera was over where it was before, you'd see nothing but the side of the bag the whole time, okay? You don't want that. Now, like I said, we're gonna learn a new trick here, okay? What we're going to do is we're gonna start about a half inch down. We'll start sewing right there. Okay, and the reason we're gonna do that is, is because we're gonna put a rivet in the very top. All right, and that's what'll hold the very top of this bag together because it's way stronger than the stitch will ever be. But once again, I'm gonna pull me some, some extra thread out right here in the very beginning, and I'm not gonna worry about a back stitch. Okay? So just gonna go forward on it as soon as I get everything lined up and under here like it needs to be. There we go. And I just want to start basically kind of where the top of the uh, that laptop pocket is in there, that, that, that tablet sleeve. I want to start right there. All right. Back it up a little bit more here. There we go. Right at the top of that pocket. Okay. And I'm going to start stitching. And I'm going to do a little bit wider of a clearance than I normally do. Um, this stitch line is going to end up being about 3 16 of an in inch in when normally I only do about an eighth of an inch or so. Okay, and then I want to be careful removing my clips because this leather scratch is pretty easy, which, you know, after a month of use, it's going to look awesome with all those scratches, but when someone first gets it, it shouldn't be all scratched up, right? There we go. Climbing up over that little seam there where the gussets come together. Now, you have to watch this right here. See how the top of my bag is kind of pushing against the sewing machine there? You need to force that out of the way because what that's gonna do is it's gonna drag your, drag your sew line to where it's not going straight, but you won't even realize it because you're concentrating down here and not with what's going on up here. Okay, I know it seems like it's only three inches apart from each other, but when you're concentrating hard on your stitching, three inches is a long way. Okay, so once again, just trying to finagle it, make sure my, my edges of my leather are all lining up as nicely as I can get them. Poor buddy, the shop dog wants my attention so bad down here at my feet, but I'm busy with you guys right this second. All right, we're gonna keep going around the corner, try to make it as smooth of a corner as you can. And there we go, we are through the corner. Now, down the side we go. And just like a while ago, once you've done that corner, you're like, man, this is easy, I'm just gonna stitch away. the uh, back part of my clip folded under there. There we go. Got it. I hate it when that happens. It's hard when you're making a, a rustic themed item like this. You also want it to be quality, of course. You know, you don't want it to be so rustic that it's crap. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a difficult balance. Uh, both in the designing aspect of it and then, of course, the execution aspect of it. Um, again, you, you want it to look like it was made in the 1800s. You want it to look like it's been ridden on a horse and, you know, 
traveled across the, the country a couple of times, but you also want it to be appealing to your consumer or to whoever's looking at it. Maybe you're not selling it, maybe you're keeping it for yourself. That's great too. All right, so once again, I'm at a corner. I'm making sure up here that I'm not um, causing myself a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that out of the way. And I'm gonna start working my way around that corner. Sorry, I know I'm kind of in the way there, but I want to make sure that I'm going around this thing as smoothly as I can. There we go. So these clips can be stubborn when you're getting, I mean, this is a decent thickness of leather. This stuff is probably six, seven ounce in some places. And then uh, three layers of it. I say six, seven, it's probably just five, six. there folks and of course this clip wants to fall apart on me <laughs> never goes as planned does it Okay, and then I want to remember when I get to this other side here, dang, there we go. I'm just going to go kind of where the lap, top of the lap, laptop pocket is. I'm not going to go all the way to the very top. Because again, we're going to put a rivet in there and it's going to hold everything nice and secure. Forever. There we go. All right, now, once again, I'm going to pull a little bit of extra thread out and I'll show you what we do with that when we set that rivet. So join me back at the desk. All right, I couldn't help myself. I had to go ahead and buckle it up. Can't deny how awesome this is gonna look, right? Love this pull-up leather, this uh, uh, Legacy Ranch. Uh, you can find it on our website. This is the lighter brown of the three colors. Um, we have it in black, a dark, dark brown, and then this lighter brown. And I, I go back and forth all the time on do I like the lighter brown or the darker brown more. But either way, this is awesome. All right. Playtime's over. Let's fix this. Okay. So we left these um, threads long here. Let me turn this thing to where you can see it, right? Left these threads long here. And we also didn't sew all the way to the top here. So what I want to do is get my cutting board out. I am going to send a hole punch right through there. Okay, I'm going to bring it in a decent little amount because um, I don't want to accidentally have my rivet hanging over the edge. Let me zoom in for you. Okay, um, so about right there. Um, because again, I don't want my rivet hanging over the edge of the bag at all. Um, but I want it kind of close. So punch me a hole that didn't go through all the layers yet. There we go. There's a couple of different layers there. Now on this one, I'm going to set the rivet from the back to the front because you'll see it in the back side and on the front side, you won't really see it because it's where the accordion gusset is. Okay. Now, before I push that rivet all the way in, I'm gonna take the end of that thread, sorry, I'm gonna take the end of that thread and I'm gonna wrap it around that rivet a couple of times. Okay, 
and then I'll push it all the way in on the back side. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the front side once I get my uh, uh, washer on there just a little bit. Okay, get my anvil out before I get too far on this. I always set my rivets on an anvil. They'll do a lot better than if I'm trying to set them on this cutting board, that's for sure. So you have to hit these so hard that the cutting board will just give. So I'll do the same thing on the front side. I'm going to take and wrap my thread around it a couple of times if I can get it to. I may have to tell you what I'll do is I'll just kind of halfway set this to get it stuck on there a little bit. There we go. Now I can wrap this sucker around here and I'll give it a couple of wraps. There's one and two. And pull that back one tight, make sure it's on there good like it needs to be. Now I'll finish setting that rivet. Okay, good and set. Um, yeah, now I'm gonna cut that rivet and set it. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the back side or on the, uh, the opposite side. Okay, this is one side of the bag. There's one of these on the other side of the bag. So once again, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. No reason to make you watch. When I'm done, we've got two more pieces to add to this bag and then we're gonna make the shoulder strap. All right, I got those done. We've got just a couple more pieces to put on this bag, okay? So these are the little closures that'll attach to these Sam Brown buttons here and we'll make it to where the bag can be mostly closed or, or fully open, okay? And there's no markings anywhere for where to put these and that's on by design because depending on the thickness of leather and stuff like that that you've used, um, it might be a, a, a variable, okay? So what I like to do is go ahead and push them onto my Sam Brown buttons, like so, okay? Go ahead and we can snap this closed if we want or whatever. Do, 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 do. All right. Turn it around to the back here. And all I'm gonna do is wrap them around and figure out where they fall. Okay, and once again, I'm going to also want to rivet these right in between those bottom two seams. Okay, so I'm going to wrap them both over and make sure that they're not interfering with anything else with where I'm going to put them. Okay, and I want to make sure they're pulled nice and, nice and snug. Okay, and the, the end of them should be right about in the middle of your D-ring here. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'll zoom in on this little location for you now that we're done looking at the whole thing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scratch all and I'm gonna punch a hole or poke a hole all the way through here and into my, my uh, hinge piece, okay? Now I can see where that is. And I'm gonna do it on both sides. That way I know where to punch my holes. And again, I want to make sure it's in between those two stitch seams. All right. Oops, sorry. Pointing at something that's not on camera. All right. So now I get to punch more holes and set more rivets because that's what we do, right? But I need to be careful because there's a lot of stuff inside this bag now. So I've got some options. I could use a, uh, um, what is this called? A rotary punch. If it'll reach, and it will, um, I can use a rotary punch. I can put a, a uh, uh, cutting board inside the bag, but if I just go and, and punch through right here, what's going to happen is I'm gonna end up punching through several other layers of my bag that I don't want to uh, have a, a, a rivet or a hole in, okay? So just be careful. Okay, so I'm just gonna check. I'm not punching a hole anywhere I don't need a hole. And there we go. All the way through, just like it needs to be. Then I'll flip it around here, I'll do the same thing.
There we go. All right, so I also need to punch that same hole in these pieces. This is the one of the few times I actually use a rotary punch is when I'm doing something like this. Um, generally, I do like drive punches that you can lay something down on the uh, cutting board and cut it. And then I'm just going to set more rivets from the outside of the bag to the inside of the bag. So I'll show you on this side what that looks like. Go ahead and pull that off the front because I'm riveting it to the back. Hard to see, but there we are right there. There's my little rivet. Okay, and look how, how close that is to that laptop pocket. We gotta be really careful here not to damage anything that's already done. Put my washer on. Now these washers are stamped out, so there is a curved side and then a, a rigid side to them. And I like to make sure that my rigid side is down. It's just a tiny little detail, but it does look a little bit more finished that way. Okay. There we go. All right, there's one. I'm gonna set the other one, and when we get back, we'll talk about shoulder straps. All right, we now have a really, really awesome bag. This has gone very, very well. Super excited about it, but we still have to find a way to hang it off our shoulders. So, shoulder strap, okay? Super easy. One inch strap times as long as you want it to be. Okay, generally this would be a crossbody type uh, hanging bag. So you gotta kind of figure out, well, do you want it to hang really low? You want it to hang way up high? What do you want to do? Okay, and I'm gonna make it adjustable as well because why wouldn't we make it adjustable? Why would we, why would we make it to where you can only wear it one way and, and that's it, right? So again, it's a subjective thing. That's why there's no complete pattern or template for like the shoulder strap, just like there wasn't for the handle. So it's all about how you want it. So I'm gonna start out just putting my uh, one end of my strap together here. Um, if it's adjustable, I need my strap to be two pieces, okay? There's the main long piece that goes up over my shoulder, and then there's the other piece that's just gonna have a buckle and, and stuff on it. Um, first thing I'm doing is just taking, and, taking my round punch and uh, making the ends of it round. Okay, and then we'll zoom into the cutting board here and see what we're doing. There we go. So I am going to put on this my two trigger snap hook thingies. Um, so to do that, I'm just going to bend over one side there and send my hole punch through it. Just like that. And that's gonna end up getting riveted on. Okay, so I'm not gonna set the rivet just yet um, because I got more stuff to do. I might as well set two rivets at once. Okay, the other side is going to be where the buckle goes. Okay, I've got a one inch cart buckle gonna go on it. So what I need to do is I need to take an oblong punch. If you don't have an oblong punch, that's okay. Take a one eighth inch punch and punch two holes about an inch to an inch and a quarter from each other and then cut out the space in between them and that'll make your oblong punch. It's no big deal. Did it for years before I had a good set of oblong punches. Okay, so we're gonna fold this over my buckle. Like this. And then we're going to put another rivet in this end of it. Okay. So let me 
me punch the hole for that rivet and then I'm not gonna make you watch me set another couple of rivets because I have a feeling this is already a two hour long video and uh, y'all got better stuff to do with your time than watch me set a bunch of rivets, right? So, when I come back, I'll have two rivets on this side and uh, you know, and again, the trigger snap will be in the other end. Um, yeah, and then I'm gonna put a trigger snap also on one end of my longer piece. And then I'll kind of put it over my shoulder and figure out how how long I want to make my my straps and I'll cut it down on the billet end, which is where the the adjustable holes are. Okay? So when I get back, we'll have those riveted on and we'll talk about the height. All right, so I've got my two little straps made, okay? So I'm gonna take and connect my two snap hooks to my, uh, my their appropriate places on the back of the bag here. And then I'm just gonna wrap it around me and figure out where I want it. So I don't want it to hang way too low, but I also don't want it way up under my armpit either. Okay, so again, that's where the adjustability also comes in. And also, I am trying to lose weight. So far, I'm 22 pounds down in the last couple of months, and I'm pretty happy about that. So, anyway, all that to say this. Um, about right here is where I'm going to start. And what I'll do is I'll kind of make this my tightest uh, hole, and then I'll go down five, six inches from here so that it will end up being as low as this if I want it to. Okay, so bring that back up where it was so I can figure out where to make that hole. And I'm just gonna take my, my hole punch and make me a little indention there so I know where that is, okay? So take There we go. And then I'm just gonna make my holes about every inch, inch and a quarter or so as I go down. I don't need micro adjustments. It's not like a watch band that, a, you know, a teeny tiny bit matters. Um, so yeah, I'll just uh, go down about every inch, inch and a quarter, somewhere around there. I'll do five or six more holes. And um, yeah. And then about three inches after the last hole, I'll take my round punch. About three inches after where my last hole will be, which is right there, I'll take my round punch and I'll just lop off the end of this thing because I don't need all that. All right. So here we go. Take this in, I'll run it through my buckle. There we go, I've got it right there. Now, there was one more piece to the, uh, um, to the template set. So it was the shoulder strap pad. All right, very simple, very effective. It's just that piece right there. And there's two ways you can do this. Uh, one is you can thread it through just like it is. It's a little bit tight because it's brand spanking. You can thread it through just like this and uh, put it on your shoulder and break it in and use it. The other thing you can do is you can add a, a lining to this and you can just sew all the way around the perimeter of it and then the strap would go in on this end run through the middle of the whole piece and then out on the other end and um, yeah and it would just be a different way of doing it uh, for the ruggedness this is the way that this is going to be 
Um, but for a more refined one, uh, I've got my I've got another one somewhere around here that's that's the other way around. Um, but if you want to make it a little bit more refined, then that's what you could do is sew an, a liner all the way around the outside of this piece and then run your run your strap through the middle of it. And uh, again, two different ways to do the same thing. So that's it, guys. This was a long video. It's been a long day, but I am stupid excited with how this bag has turned out. Funny thing is, this uh, bag is actually supposed to go to the Texas Beef Council. It's going to get their logo put on the front of it uh, when I have a minute to get that done. And uh, it'll be a giveaway for them this weekend at an event that we're doing together. But, um, yeah, I think I may make another one tomorrow. Same leather. <laughs> so, until next time, I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply. I hope you enjoyed this project, and I hope you have a great day.